time for documentation. Don't we love reading documentation? We do not love reading the documentation, but we must learn to love it if we're going to be good data scientists. Now, how you approach the documentation. Oh, and the documentation might also be clarifying questions asked to the people who collected the data. Maybe you're lucky enough to know them and you can actually go and talk to them. Please, pretty please. Social skills are really good for data scientists. Go be social with the people who collected the data. You might learn some stuff that would be very useful to you. So go socialize. Now, the way that you approach the documentation depends on what kind of data science you're going to be doing here. If you're doing analytics, what you can do is a, a pretty light way to approach. Kind of check how much documentation there is. Seems fine, not totally crazy, readable. Okay, then you can go off and explore the data and you don't have to worry too much about what anything means. Uh, that's because first you'll go and see if any of it even looks like it has anything fun or useful in it. And then if you're in danger of bringing a potential insight to a business leader, then you're gonna go and check the documentation around whatever data you use to build that insight to make sure that it is in fact not total rubbish. But you can dive in without reading too much. That's okay, that's okay for analytics. Uh, because you don't wanna be faced with say a column in a spreadsheet that turns out to be all zeros all the way through and meanwhile you were learning very carefully about what that variable name meant and how it was actually computed and arranged and collected and there's not even a signal in there. You don't wanna be in that situation so, you know, dive in quickly, as long as what you're doing is analytics and exploration. If you're doing machine learning or AI, in that case, you might also throw it in without reading the documentation, just to see if it kind of seems to help out um, with training your model. If it does, as with analytics, you can go and read the documentation carefully. And the, the thing that makes this approach safe-ish in machine learning is that if you're gonna do it right, your validation and testing will be done on primary data. It does not count unless you do it on primary data. So for example, you might have trained on all of ImageNet, which is a repository with millions of nicely labeled photographs. And you trained a vision system. And now it can detect objects in photographs. Great, you used those old photographs to train it in validation and testing to check if it does work. Please collect the sorts of images or photographs that you're gonna use in your live device and check how it works there. That is the real test of performance. So you will need to collect primary data to really test out a machine learning system, but you can train it on secondary data. Now, if you're a statistician though, statisticians do not get away with this so lightly. A statistician will need to go and read that documentation in detail and it is boring. I know it's boring. I'm so sorry that it is boring. If you want to be good at your craft, that is what you will need to do. So if you're a data scientist doing statistics, it is utterly important that you understand exactly what each variable is, exactly the best of your ability, how it was created, how it was computed, what were the formulas, what were the choices, what does everything mean? If you have a data set that says weight, what kind of scale did they use? How did it work in real life? You have to think through this stuff. And to the extent that you can and you have time, it certainly wouldn't hurt to take that approach in analytics and machine learning as well. But